I think the appetite is always there. And what, what, what we're seeing now in terms of uh, this investment from uh, CNOC is uh, mostly going to go to existing assets that they already have in terms of capital expenditure into projects that are either ongoing or coming online. But does this so, automatically mean more production? The type of investments that we're well, if, likely to see? Given usually when you have KPS expenditure, it's usually towards expected higher production, whether on existing field or bringing new fields online. So definitely, it might not be as significant as uh, we, would, uh, we would like, but it's something that, uh, that can actually, uh, I think what NMPC is trying to do and what they've been trying to do uh, significant is to restructure the whole uh, JV uh, structure so that they can reduce their own requirement to actually put up capital upfront in investment. And that's why they've been negotiating with different IOCs to make sure that these IOCs actually cover the cash call so that projects uh, can continue, they can cover the KPS, and that's what we're seeing with this as well. Last year, they did similar thing with some IOCs, and we're expecting more. That right. Um, I think it was last year that the National Assembly um, passed the, the Petroleum, uh, Petroleum Industry, Industry Governance, Bill. Governance Bill, and a lot of people were really excited about that. But I don't think we've seen a follow-through in terms of investments. Um, tell us about what investors are telling you about bringing their money into Nigeria right now? Well, uh, the way I see it, the upstream space uh, in terms of petroleum industry governance bill, so it's not usually uh, an immediate thing, all right? In terms of uh, when you look at the oil and gas space, it's uh, usually a long-term play. It's not something that you see, you immediately see investment into exploration, sometimes even assessing uh, new uh, fields, <coughs> new, new assets to be acquired by any new uh, any IOCs. It usually take a very long period. But I think the governance bill, since it has been put in place, usually, it, let's give it, say, another a, another year or two, we'll begin to see activities, most importantly in terms of exploration, because that has really slowed over the past decade. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see something, we'll see some pickup level in the next two, three Let's years. move on to, to get your perspective on the price of oil. And we're hearing about this strike in Norway. Where do you see the price going? Up, down? Sideways. I think price is going to be very volatile. We are going to see a lot of up and down movement, right? If you look at last week, we saw a, a, a single day decline of up to about five, seven percent. And just yesterday, similar thing, largely due to increase in production from Saudi Arabia. So the, the, the old environment right now in terms of what is happening uh, in the global space, oil price is going to be very volatile, say, in the next two, three months until we have a much more clear outlook in terms of what production would be from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. We've seen that this week they've offered more cargoes to Asian consum uh, Asian countries in, uh, for crude oil for shipment in July and uh, in July and August. So by the time we, we, we get the next OPEC uh, report for August, for, Ju uh, for July, for August, we will begin to see more clear clearly what the direction is if they are actually yielding to the pressure from the United States to increase production. And that will make that will bring some stability into the credit market. But right now, it's going to be very volatile as for this news. What would you the say market. about the pact between OPEC and Russia that is sort of stopping the non-OPEC producers from increasing, uh, ramping up production? Because th there's always been that argument that the shale producers can always supply the market, but we haven't seen that impact the price. So I imagine that that that's supply hasn't been happening because. Ideally, everyone says that above $40, $50 a barrel, the share producers are in the money. So they should be able to continue to pump well, that oil Well, if you, if you look at data from the United States, there has actually been a significant increase in production. But what happened, what the good thing was that that increase actually coincided with a period where we have significant challenges in Venezuela as well. So it, it sort of balanced out. But that, that's even the more reason why, uh, reason now that OPEC is more interested in curbing excessive price uh, rally because if price rise too high, it gives more incentive to North American producers to actually invest more in terms of bringing uh, shale oil to the surface. Mm -hmm. And that's why, aside from the U.S. desire for lower crude oil price, it's actually in the best interest of OPEC as well not to allow crude oil prices to get out of hand. Mm -hmm. So I think there has been increase in production due to the high prices from North America, but there has been significant decline as well. And demand, most importantly, in terms of outlook for global growth this year, has significantly in increased relative to last year or the year before. 
So that's that's has created some sort of balance, and that's why we've seen that everything tends to normalize despite the increase in production. All right, Jubil, thanks so much for.